<clears throat> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, today's uh, webinar. Um, my name is uh, Abdulaziz Alangari, and today uh, we're going to talk about how to spot uh, the predatory journals and conferences. Um, I am a uh, program director and assistant professor in the Department of uh, Epidemiology and Biostatistics, College of Public Health and Health Informatics uh, at King Saud bin Abdulaziz University for Health Sciences. So let's start with a question. Um, why we publish, right? So we have this kind of uh, uh, motive uh, to publish uh, things um, out there. Uh, some of you wants to advance uh, science uh, and research, and I think most of us want uh, this type of uh, approach and, and motive. Uh, some of them want credits and recognition, right? Some wants to, you know, they there's a concept of publish uh, or perish, which a faculty or an academician um, feel this pressure to either you either they publish or otherwise they uh, their career is kind of destroyed. Um, some of them wants for promotion, for money, um, and uh, these are some kind of uh, motive of why people uh, wants to publish, whether uh, you fit here or you fit you or you have any kind of other reasons. So you know, um, think about this question because I'm gonna ask this later. So, article processing charges. We know. I'll start by this because that's the key factor of how predatory journals. Um, Rode the ship, right? Um, so traditionally, individuals or institutions pay subscription fees um, to access articles. So articles. So as an author, you submit to a journal. They don't take um, any fee from from you. However, they take from the institution that um, uh, wants to get this article, right? So that's basically the tradition uh, way to do. You know, in you know beginning of nineties, um, this started with the fact that authors start to pay for the uh, subs for the article processing uh, charges or fees. Okay, uh, they pay to have it as an open access, so no need for institutions to go in and uh, subscribe to certain journals. Okay. And this came with the introduction of uh, the Internet and the widespread of, you know, the availability and accessibility of Internet. So. Just a quick introduction about how the um, uh, subscription work in the market of um, journals basically uh, um, either the scientists or the author um, go and pay for the uh, application fee and and it gets to the readership uh, freely um, or the author uh, goes uh, go and um, uh, do not do a payment and person who wants this article go and uh, needs to pay some kind of subscription fee or pay uh, a peer article kind of uh, category. <clears throat> and then I want to also introduce the um, international standard uh, of Syrian number. OK, most of journals, they have this kind of uh, number. It's called the ISSN number. It's different than the uh, uh, book serial number, the ISBNs. Um, um, so this is for um, journals, uh, etc. So basically, the international standard serial number is a eight-digit code. Okay, used to identify newspapers, journals, magazines, and 
periodicals of all kind and uh, and on all media print or and digital so it's either printed or digital there is some kind of um, iss number uh, for each um, of those uh, uh, journals and you know the purpose of, of these is in, in fact to dis dis distinguish between journals right so some journals have some kind of similar name or same name and to differentiate you'll have some kind of um you know uh, a serial number for uh, each of those it's like you know having a, a social security number or uh, the national id uh, number for each one to you know differentiate between a person and a person even if they have you know some kind of similar names so this works as an international so this works in uh, uh, globally uh, however for a for each country there is a center that you know works with the isis and uh, organization and in saudi we have king fahad uh, national library which any journal um, or any um, uh, newsletter uh, magazine etc wants to get uh, publication and, and and move forward with their uh, business they need to register uh, their iss in number through king fahad national library <clears throat> and then there's the other concept of uh, dois which is a unique persistent identifying number for a document published online so we've got a ISS number for a journal, and then we've got the DOIs for um, articles, right? So um, this is specifically for articles, um, a manuscript, uh, a piece of work, okay? ISSN numbers is basically um, related to the the uh, the journal itself. Okay. So a quick overview about the publication uh, process. I'm gonna start when when I introduce these concepts. I'm gonna start with basics. I expect you know um, uh, not everyone with the same level of understanding. Um, there are professionals. There are uh, uh, people who knows this uh, and the, the ins and out of these. However, there are other people who really, um, you know, just starting their career and and publication. So I'll try and, you know, introduce these uh, while while the time uh, serves. So a quick overlook about the publication process. Um, you know, basically, um, the author submits a manuscript. It goes to an editor. Editor will will have some kind of. Um, uh, you know, um, quick look at it. If there, if if it if it suits the journal or not. Um, uh, if it suits the journal, then the, you know it goes to the next step. If also uh, the uh, the the piece of work or article um, or manuscript is uh, it's a good manuscript and fits with um, uh, you know it's it's a novel. It's a um, you know, a good manuscript, they will move it toward a uh, reviewers. If it's not applicable, then it will have a disc reject. And that's, you know, that's another, um, uh, we need to have another webinar talks about uh, how disc reject goes in the, in the, in the process. Um, and then editor will, will, um, will uh, push this to reviewers. Uh, reviewers will uh, look into the components of the manuscript and then um, uh, give some kind of uh, comments. Uh, editor receive the comments uh, and make a decision based on this, whether to revise and submit or to directly accept or to um, reject. And then from there, if it's accepted, you know, the manuscript goes um, publicly. Okay. So that's that's the whole um, you know basic information about how manuscripts goes through the process of scientific uh, a peer review. So 
<clears throat> so ways to pray. I mean, we want to hit in this um, uh, webinar um, common characteristics and practices of predatory journals. We want to see what are the, uh, you know, commonality between all these um, um, predatory journals and, and avoid um, uh, even reaching out to them at some point. So the first thing we know that, you know, predatory journals go to you, okay? So first they, they want to approach you. Um, you don't go and approach them. Uh, so basically the easiest way to do um, is through emailing, right? So if you submitted this manuscript and you published this article um, um, in, in a good journal, in a, in a journal that's, you know, high impact and it's um, uh, legit and everything, you know, sometimes you include your email, right, as a corresponding author or co-author. And, you know, that's where... The issue come. Uh, predatory journals, they go and seek these emails um, that's published in the article and try to uh, 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 push you with, you know, daily invitations in your email. Sometimes you'll find it in your junk email. Uh, sometimes uh, it goes through to your uh, inbox. So that's, that's the main thing that the predatory journals um, go and and, and uh, prey on, on on authors. So let's 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 give you an example of how this work. Okay. So that's a an example of a um, email. So basically, uh, greetings from you know um, uh, name of the journal will be something similar to uh, uh, a genuine journal. Right, um, and then basically I'm writing to introduce, uh, you know, uh, this journal, which is a newly launched uh, journal by this and that from this country. And usually, what they do is they uh, have this uh, this ISSN number registered in U.S., U.K., uh, Canada. You know these countries with the uh, with the uh, you know uh, the most uh, legitimate uh, public uh, uh, publishers. Okay, so basically they take this ISIS number from these countries while they work actually in other countries. Okay, um, a countries with a low uh, middle income. Uh, countries, okay. Um, sometimes you'll see, oh, we acknowledge your research and we like your research and we really want your research to to be there and and uh, you know they they flatter you with some kind of uh, you know um, uh, script that will make you oh, okay. I'm I'm that person who will go and uh, submit to your article. You appreciate my work, and then. <clears throat> You know, sometimes um, um, they will use some kind of different index uh, and uh, abstracting uh, services. Um, and then you'll find some kind of missing information. You don't know where this come from, right? So this is an example of um, how this manuscript was, how this uh, predatory journal sent to people. So they will use to who, so the first mistake is spelling. So to whomsoever it may concern. I mean, come on, whomsoever. So this should be a journal that, you know, look into your spelling as an author and grammar. How about, you know, uh, uh, you know, getting this uh, spelling mistake, okay? Editor in chief, chief. So that's that's also um, an issue when it comes to uh, spelling and grammar. So these are the things that, when you look into it, 
it will give you some kind of uh, flags, right? I mean, look at this example. Um, so the journal published papers of the highest scientific merit and widest possible scope work in all areas related to medical and dental sciences. So widest scope. So the scope of the journal, it will include everything, right? They just want your manuscript to be there. And then also you'll find uh, indexing. So, oh, it's indexed in Crossref, uh, NASA ads. What's NASA ads? Uh, DOAJ, uh, Index um, uh, Copernicus, um, OpenJ, etc. These are some of them not legit. Some of them are not supposed to be an, an, an indexing uh, um, pathways. Okay. So the other one is, you know, IJDMSR journal publisher publishes within 48 hours. That's another flag. You know, when you look at these in your emails, 48 hours is not you know, the time to have your manuscript um, getting through peer review, etc. Another example, so I got this one. We would like to invite you to write a research article based on your research interest, which is journal of this and this and that. Uh, and you may want to submit through this, okay? Would appreciate receiving. So this is one of the type of the things that you will find. If you have something similar structure of these, even if it has ISSN number, anyone can get an ISS number, okay? So don't be fooled by this ISS number. Sometimes you'll have, you know, a, um, a valid ISS number. You'll go and search for that number and you'll find it. The same exactly journal name. But the thing is, some of them will have a wrong uh, ISIS number, or invalid ISIS number. Even those who have a valid ISIS number, they could be a pretty free journal. So having an ISIS number does not guarantee that this journal is legit. This is another email I got. Dear, okay, become editorial board members. You see, members or reviewers and publish your paper, this paper. So they want me to publish my paper again. Which kind of journal is this? So I already published a paper. They want me to republish the paper in their journal. So that's another way to you know look for this. Another point is they use some kind of different you know, letters. You see members, the fourth letter uh, B is kind of, you know, fuzzy there. The viewers, the R, it has some kind of extension on the left. You know, they use these to go through uh, your junk mail. These are um, the, uh, the, uh, the words that the junk, that's the uh, Gmail, uh, Microsoft, any any email uh, provider will filter those emails and goes to junk mail. Okay, so they use some kind of fuzzy words. <coughs> Another way is advertisement. So they basically advertise, right? So they advertise for your. Um, um, so they advertise for themselves, right? They will go and 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 not particularly to you, but they will go and and you know advertise it in in so many um, uh, platforms. So what they do actually is you know they promise a rapid publication and rapid uh, peer review process, right? So they will tell you like, oh, okay, uh, I'll float your article in no time. You know, low sub submission fees and uh, AP, uh, uh, APCs, right? This is one example. I mean, 
I got this in, in, in LinkedIn. Um, and it, it goes, it goes like, oh, even in, uh, in, in your language, it's customized to your language, okay? There's, there's nothing called ISI journal publications as a company, right? Or as a publisher called ISI, okay? It's a scientific committee or, or, or council or whatever. It's not a name of the journal. So sometimes they will go and, and target, you know, they promote this. It, it, it has a promote. There is a promotion for this. They pay for, for advertising. And you cannot say, I mean, they, they can say, oh, we have this ISS number and um, et cetera, right? So they can get through. In any case, they can get through in, in, in so many scenarios. But when it comes to scientific, no, they, they clash there. They stop there. These are some kind of, you know, quick traces of predators and how, you know, predators, you know, go and, and, and seek the praise. Types of predators, right? So there are almost three or four types of uh, predators. One, you've got the fisher, right? So those people, those journals will basically lure you <clears throat> so they will lure you in the promises with charges larger fees after your paper has been accepted so they they want you to get in and once you are in they will tell you okay it's now it's accepted um in a set of a uh, hundred dollars you need to pay five hundred dollars okay Publication fee are usually not openly disclosed, and after acceptance, fishers may demand payment even though no paperwork has been signed. Okay, that's that's basically one type of those journals. Imposters or hijackers, right? So those possess a um, as a well-established journal. Okay, so they will have some kind of similar name. Um, to a um, well-established and legit journals. And sometimes um, they often um, uh, tack on an extra word, like, for example, if I want to say the International Journal of Epidemiology, right? And then they will say the International Journal of Epidemi Epidemiology, and then they will add review or International Journal of Epidemiology reports. So this way, you will be fooled toward, oh, this is a really, you know, nice, nice journal. But when you go inside and deep into it, it's, it's just one of these fake journals. Trojan horse. So it has a legitimate uh, looking website, um, often with impressive lists of publications, but upon closer inspection, nothing is what it seems. Everything is fake. So we'll have this, you know, website that has, you know, all these, you know, nice journals, uh, articles, and, you know, fancy looking. But actually, it's all fake and fake. Okay. The journals are empty shells, or worse, populated by stolen, um, plagiarized articles. Okay, so plagiarism. Unicorn. Okay, these journals, it's too good to be true. So these publishers um, may in fact be legitimate businesses, which are not providing good products or customer support service. So it could be a um, legitimate uh, uh, journal, but they don't, you know, give you as an author the good service that you, you, you want, okay? So this includes, you know, uh, um, you know, um, missing uh, archiving. So archiving is, is a disaster. So it's, it's no guarantees that you 
your article will be archived for, for a certain um, uh, prolonged time, okay? It could disappear anytime. Um, there is no well-defined uh, peer review criteria um, and, you know, questions about ethics. So let's, let's look for uh, some of the red flags to identify the predators. So when you go to the journal website, you'll find some kind of, you know, contact information. The first thing I go is going through the contact information. And once you see, so I, I, I hide the numbers uh, there. Um, I don't want any trace for any, any of these journals. Um, so the contact email address is non-professional and non-journal publishing affiliated. So they will find, oh, uh, this is a uh, Gmail or Yahoo, or it could be, you know, one of the, um, or it could be a, um, the website email. The one point that you look for is WhatsApp. Once you look for anything with a WhatsApp or WeChat, these apps for uh, communicating, you know, that's a turn off. Here you stop and say, okay, there's no journal that would, you know, do anything with a WhatsApp. Okay. Scope of the journal. So the journal scope, you know, include unrelated subjects. And it has, you know, so many things included. Sometimes it will talk about health. Sometimes it will talk about engineering. Sometimes it talks about, you know, uh, uh, computer science, you know, everything, anything. Just bring me your manuscript and I'll just put it as a hostage. <coughs> it has false information. The general aspect about uh, the predatory journals is that they claim to be indexed. Okay, in PubMed, Medline, um, you know, uh, etc. Uh, it will give you an impact factor, you know, a false impact factor. Um, it will give you some kind of uh, uh, false information about the editorial board or the reviewers. Okay, so just false information. Just you know, they just put it there. Look at this example. So. This is an example of a predatory journal. Um, you see um, four journals under one company. And what they do is they have a, you know, the impact factor is seven, seven, six, seven. I mean, this is really a false impact factor. And you, you will not find an impact factor for, for this journal, okay? And sometimes what they do is they don't, you know, give you a clear number, they give you a, 7.024 just to lure you and tell you hey we have this you know exact measure that we are doing calculation on so you know i don't know how all of these have a similar impact factor while they they have a different categories or different you know uh, area so Still, they have ISS numbers, you see. Everyone has SSI, uh, ISS uh, N numbers. So this is, this is their way of telling you we are legit. But in fact, they are not legit. So don't be fooled by the ISS N numbers. Okay? Editorial board, they give you a fake, non-existing editors or the name of well-known authors without their approval. So I'm afraid I'll be in one of these editorial boards while I don't know. I mean, they have the information, right? They can go into any article and see the affiliation and they just copy and paste. They put you in the editorial board. Next day you are an editorial board in that journal. This is an example. I looked into uh, this journal and I found this professor his name is Dr. Abab J. Ali from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. So I Googled him, right? I said, okay, who's this Dr. Abab? And then in fact, the name was not Abab. So this is the real person. His name is Abbas. 
So a journal just put in the same information in the professor's website, okay? And they changed the uh, the last uh, uh, letter from from S to B. This is because when you Google the name, you'll not find them. And even the professor uh, himself, if he wants to Google his name, if he's in one of these journals, you will not find it because they changed the, uh, the name of the uh, professor. So that's a thing that you need to to uh, to look for. Publication fee. I mean, we know this as a you know uh, the model for how authors you know pay for APCs and 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 and, and how it's you know the subscription versus uh, open access. Predator general all the way. What they do is they want your money. They don't have this kind of um, uh, subscription-based uh, type of journals. They just want the money to go and, and do this. Even with their publication fee, it's not clear with how they charge. And they offer a very low APCs. Okay, a very low um, uh, charging um, uh, application uh, uh, um, article uh, processing fees, right? So this is this is an example. I mean, they have a PayPal, so you pay through PayPal, right? And there's a lot of options from 200 or customized amount. You know, you go and you you, you customize the amount based on whatever they get. You know, the editor will tell you how much it's gonna cost. Okay, so there's no way to. Yeah, I mean, there's so many hidden fees when it comes to this. I remember looking at one of the article, uh, one of the journals, and they say if you are a single author, that's forty dollars. If you are, you know, uh, two authors, that's uh, sixty dollars, and three authors, and that's the max. You cannot have four authors. You can have only three authors, eighty dollars. So I haven't seen this in any scientific journals is based on authors and there's a max oh no don't put you know a lot of authors only three if you want you know another uh, another um, uh, to add an author you know you need to submit a different article even with their submission process if you want to submit your article you know it go through a very basic and a Microsoft uh, forms or Google form. This is a, a, a submission uh, form in their website directly without even creating a username or password. You just put this information and you upload your paper and, and you're good to go. You see, the other thing is not only this. You can send it by email. So. If a journal asks you to send a paper by an email, that's also a red flag. You cannot just go and, and submit a paper by email. There should be a certain tracking system or a process of you know handling your, your transcript. Okay, so anything when it comes to even the basic uh, submission forms. That you know you can do it without a username and password or the email. That's a red flag. And once you submit it, welcome hostage. You are now a hostage. Once you submit your paper, you are under their um, mercy. Let's talk about the um, peer review process, right? <coughs> Talking about the peer review process, you know, usually that's the model that we talked about earlier, right? So the author will submit to editor, review, peer review, and then editor again, and then it goes public. In, in, in predatory journals, you know, the model is this. So it's basically author submit the manuscript and then the manuscript is accepted. 
Let's look at one example. Okay, two examples. This is a, uh, uh, someone uh, called Daniel, um, and he, you know, submitted a manuscript to this predatory journal. Uh, he wants to, to test them, right, to see if they accept this manuscript or not. So look at the abstract. Many people wonder, what's the deal with birds? This is a common query. Birds are pretty weird. I mean, they have feathers, right? Most other animals don't have feathers. To investigate this issue, I looked at some birds, right? I looked at woodpecker, parrots, penguin. They were all pretty weird. In conclusion, we may never know the deal with birds, but further study is warranted. So this was accepted, right? And it's published. And that's the, you know, DOI there and everything. <coughs> <coughs> so ISS in numbers and DOIs don't rely on them. Anyone can get these. If you, if you just submit a, a, a paper in ResearchGate, you'll get a, a DOI. So it's, it's not a thing that you would, you would judge a journal uh, based on, on. Let's look at another example. This guy did the same thing with Daniel. He submitted a journal, uh, a manuscript to a journal. And look at this, look, uh, before I go. So it's received date, March 25th, published date, April 1st. Six days or so to just, you know, have it accepted and published. So another example, um, this guy put a pizza in, in, in the model. And how pizza is related to, you know, uh, um, the birds at some point. Okay. And he submitted this. And, you know, I'll show you some of the reviewers' comments. So one of the, all of, I mean, the reviewers said, the paper is well written and discussed about the innovative work about the species and also discussed about the traditionally bird-like morphology and interclass taxonomic relationship. The new thing has been discussed like some birds are more morphological, similar to fish than others. The paper can be published in your journal. I bet you the same guy, he's, he, 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 he's doing the review and he's, pu he's putting like, oh, okay, it's, um, it can be published in your journal. Right. This is another example. This guy put in in the acknowledgement. Finally, we would like to acknowledge that this study would not have been possible had it not been for the predatory journal industry. Without it, academia and society would be a better place. Even the journal, they did not screen through this, so they accept as is. Okay. Let's look at, you know, this is just an example of how peer review can go. There's no scientific peer review. Just, you know, they take the, uh, your manuscript and they take, take it as is and they post it with its mistakes, with its, you know, everything. Some journals when, want to give you some kind of hint that they are doing a peer review. So they give you a nonsense comment. So another way to look is to look at the journal's look. See the structure of the journal, the website, basically. The articles, how does it look weird or does it look, you know, abnormal? Look at the logo. See, this is a journal, okay? And they use, you see, that's a logo on the left and the logo on the right. They changed it, right? Um, and in fact, it's similar to one of the, you know, uh, uh, publishing publishing companies that we know about, right? Elsevier. So you see, this is similar than uh, similar to. Um, uh, the journal on the, le on the, on the, on the left. 
So sometimes they want to manipulate the things and they want to show you that this is um, this is that journal or part of that journal or the part of that company. Okay. The article on the right, you see, received 6th of April, received with revised form 18th of April. So 6th of April, 18th with revision and, and, and peer review and everything. So these are the things that, you know, when we look at it, we see gives us some kind of, you know, flags. And once your article is a hostage and you want to withdraw that article, they will tell you, hey, we agree to withdraw your journal, but you need to pay 35% of the submission fee. After your payment, we issue a withdrawal certification. Right? So basically, they will take your uh, manuscript as a hostage, and then from there, they will tell you, hey, if you want it back, um, you need to uh, pay. Listing. So we'll talk about two things here. One, blacklists, and two, how to look for the article through which poor, uh, uh, legit um, indexing or um, uh, portals. So basically here, you need to see, um, so Bill's list is, you know, a um, librarian and what he what he is doing what he what he has uh, been doing i mean he's now retired uh, but he figured out that you know there are some kind of predatory journals um, he established a um, list uh, this list has a black a black listing all the journals that you know um, with certain red flags uh, criteria, etc. And um, this list is still um, it was down at some point, and now it's 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 up. Um, I mean, you can you can find it uh, online, and it has some kind of you know uh, predatory journals uh, blacklist. So that's a way of if you want to look for a predatory journal. Um, you can check there first, okay? The other way is to look into reputable citation index or ranking list association. You can go to, you know, um, uh, the Web of Science, uh, ISI. You can go to Scopus. You can go to uh, Publons, um, etc. Look for these um, uh, places to find your um, your journal, okay? And if you have some kind of ISSN numbers, you just plug it in in the search box to check. The way that we, we want to approach science is through a legit portal. Um, we, as a, as a scientist, we know our journals, and we worked with these journals. I mean, everyone can identify at least five good journals within their field, right? So try to, you know, publish among these, you know, uh, common journals in that field, okay? And look for journals with high impact factors as well. There's also an interaction. So, <coughs> Sometimes there is the Beals list, and there's also the uh, Cables uh, predatory list. Okay, so Cables uh, predatory list, um, you know, uses the Beals list. However, they have some kind of different criteria, and it's for subscription. So if I want to know if this journal is predatory or not, I need to pay. 
a subscription fee to Capel's company to go and, and look for um, these journals. Okay. However, they use different kind of, um, they are more, you know, flexible because they also allow for uh, petition from these journals. Okay. Uh, there's the bills list and there's the um, uh, cables uh, uh, verified and uh, uh, DOAJ uh, as well. You know, when we look at this, there is no kind of, you know, definition of what's a predatory journal. And when you look at these journals, you know, you got 1,000, you got 10,000, 10,000, 11,000. Commonality between all of them is, you know, zero. There is no journal that has all the, you know, um, um, a common, um, they agree to certain criteria of defining predatory journal, okay? And then there is, the last thing is conferences. I will not emphasize more about conferences because it's basically the same as journals. If you, you know, uh, uh, broaden your knowledge about how to, you know, prey on the prey, okay, you will avoid conferences. And they use the same thing. They will send you the same emails. Hey, we have a conference and we want you as a speaker, da 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 da. Uh, hey, we want you as uh, uh, publish uh, this paper in our conference, and you know, it's the similar, it's the same exact thing. So try to avoid these, um, whether it's a, a predatory journal or conferences. Again, you know, ask yourself why we publish, right? So do you want to just you know put things and 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 you know, publish it there. You know, some, you know, um, researchers, they don't know about predatory journals and they will fall this. Some others, uh, they actually want to use predatory journals. They want to, you know, pump their CV. In any case, they just want to, you know, put anything there to pump their CV. Whether they all, you know, know or don't know that this harm, the reputation, and the reputation of, of whoever will hire you, or the reputation of the institution, it's 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 a disaster for 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 science. Okay. So, uh, and then uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, listening. Um, this will end the, uh, the session. I would uh, take some kind, I think this is not active, but uh, let's see if I can active the...